Oprah's talk show was meant to heal, but that wasn't always the case. Welcome to Beyond the Screen, I'm Nate, and these are the top 10 lives destroyed by Oprah Winfrey. Number 10, Fabricated Memoir. Oprah launched her book club in 1996, a reading encouraging segment for her talk show that turned any book that she chose into a bestseller. In September of 2005, Winfrey picked A Million Little Pieces, a brutal and painful memoir by James Frett about his years long struggle with substance control issues. Now, A Million Little Pieces became became the best-selling non-fiction book of the year, and Frey was asked to appear on her talk show to discuss the book that Oprah called gut-wrenching. However, the following year, a news outlet ran a very expositive article about Frey after it was discovered that he had made up or juiced large portions of his memoir. For example, there is a section of the book that tells the story of Frey surviving a fatal train crash that took the lives of two teenagers. Yeah, he was never on that train, nor did he have any involvement in that situation. That was just something he thought it was need to put in his book. Weeks after the article broke, Oprah asked Frey to return to the show where he faced livid viewers and an even more livid Oprah. She told James that she felt duped and betrayed, a feeling that was shared by her audience and millions of readers around the world. She asked why James felt the need to lie to herself and to her readers, and he tried everything, making every excuse that he could think of. He claimed that he altered a lot of the details, but that the overall plot was real. Yeah, that claim caused the studio audience to respond with a massive wave of boo gasps and groans. Winfrey later apologized for the mistreatment from her audience as it was not really her intention, but the damage was already done. His career as a writer is non-existent. Number 9. Harry and Meghan Harry and Meghan have appeared in the public eye more and more in the past few years. After leaving the duties of their royal family to live on their own, they decided to capitalize on their so-called fame by releasing a series of different medias, books, podcasts, documentaries, and in 2021, they sat down with Oprah Winfrey to air every single piece of dirt laundry that they had left in their hamper. Of course, the royal family does not appreciate their secrets being shared with the entire world, so not only was everyone blacklisted by them, but the interview kind of soiled their reputations as good people. According to fans of the Oprah Winfrey show, the interview made the couple look more villainous than it was intended. Following the interview, their public image was slightly tainted, and with more media coming out, it was just, it made the situation so much worse. Megan got a podcast and couldn't come up with material for the first year. They made a documentary that people didn't like, so who knows what they'll get up to next. It certainly won't be anything good. Number 8. Lance Armstrong Seven time Tour de France winner Lance Armstrong has gone down in history as a man who is unable to ride a bike without chemical training wheels. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2013, Lance was brought on to discuss the allegations floating around regarding his status as a Tour de France winner. Several sources claimed that Lance had to take performance enhancing substances to win all of his races, as well as a type of transfusion involving the red life juice that lives inside all of us. Armstrong went on air and fessed up to every single thing that they were claiming he had done. However, he did deny the notion that he was some kind of a mastermind who was controlling his teammates and forcing them to join in his extracurricular activities. But if it's his admission of guilt, say that 10 times fast, I can't even do it once, there was a moment where he tried to pin the situation on his battle with cancer. He wraps it up by saying he should have tried harder to cancel the culture rather than create more of a problem. He was stripped of all seven Tour de France titles and has since lived in exile among the cycling world. Number 7. Where's the Beef? In spring of 1996, the United Kingdom apparently experienced an outbreak of bovine spongiform encephalitis or mad cow disease because I'm I can't pronounce that. According to the FDA, the disease destroys cow central nervous systems and if humans eat the infected meat, we get zombies. No, but they can contract a deadly variant called Creutzfeldt Jacob disease. During the Mad Cow scare, the Oprah Winfrey show booked Howard Lyman, the former former cattle rancher had adopted a vegetarian lifestyle and went to work for the Humane Society's Eating with Co-Science Animal Welfare campaign, and he appeared on the show to discuss the threat of mad cow disease to Americans. He pointed out that feeding the remains of a cow to an infected cattle or other animals could facilitate the spread, and that such practices were common in the United States. Oprah was stunned and vowed that she would never eat a burger ever again. Her influence and her millions of viewers, though, were so large that only a few hours after this episode aired and she declared that she'd never eat a burger again, the price of beef stocks plummeted, staying at an all-time low for two months. One Texas rancher lost an estimated $6.7 million and organized a class action lawsuit against Oprah and her show for talking trash about beef. Well, after six weeks of the trial, she won, leaving one man with no farm and out thousands and thousands of dollars in legal fees. Number 6. Tom Cruise Despite this guy being in the Mission Impossible franchise, he 
has been in a lot of movies produced by himself. You didn't think Hollywood forgot about Oprah Winfrey's interview with him, did you? I certainly will never. Following the announcement that he was engaged to Katie Holmes in the early 2000s, Tom appeared on an episode of The Oprah Winfrey Show. That is surely the most chaotic moment in TV history. From the moment he steps on stage, things just start to go horribly wrong. He throws his arms up in the air, he rubs her like she's a genie and he's trying to get a lamp out. Seriously, I'm not sure what his thought there was, but he was nuts. Tom jumped on her couch, he grabbed her hands over and over again. She couldn't even get the questions that she had out. Eventually, Oprah was like, I don't care anymore, just bring this lady out. And the cameras followed him around as he ran through the studio trying to find her. Looks like a nature guy running through a jungle with his camera crew. The moment cemented Tom as a man with many hidden personalities, and while it has not affected his work as an actor per se, ever since that day, whenever he's brought in for press or any kind of interviews, all entrances and exits must be locked. Again, this guy may be in movies still, but it's rarely anything new or exciting. Number 5. Jay Leno In 2004, NBC announced that the late night host Conan O'Brien would be taking over as the full-time host of The Tonight Show, replacing Jay Leno in five years. When those five years passed and it was time to upgrade, NBC did not want to lose Leno to another network, so they gave him his own talk show in a prime time spot. The Jay Leno Show failed to capture an audience, and The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien was not an instant rating smash. So, by the early 2010s, NBC had dismissed Conan and threw Jay back into the fold. Jay became public enemy number one. People thought that he was the reason Conan lost his job. Oprah invited Leno onto the show to share his side of the story, and he didn't do much to save face. He wrote the entire thing off as dramatic and a mess, and then decided to play the victim card, claiming that he felt sucker punched by the backlash. He also admitted that when he announced his eventual resignation, that he was 100% lying to everybody's face. He wasn't getting out of there anytime soon. He then argued very passive aggressively that NBC was right to reinstall him because under Conan's poor ratings, it marked in his words, the first time in 60 years of The Tonight Show that it would have lost money. A poll was conducted on Oprah's website and the consensus was that 96% of the audience hated Leno and missed Conan. Eventually, Jay was replaced by Jimmy Fallon and Conan O'Brien's show, Conan, was a massive success. Number 4. Monique The beef between comedian and act Monique and Oprah Winfrey goes back to 2010. Monique had just won an Oscar for her performance in Precious in 2009. And leading up to the film's premiere, Oprah interviewed Monique's brother, Gerald, who Monique claimed to have been physical towards her growing up in a truly dark way. In a since-deleted Periscope video, Monique claimed that she gave Winfrey her blessing to do the interview, but was shocked and disgusted when her parents were in the audience. In the years that followed, Monique eventually forgave Oprah for creating such an uncomfortable moment for herself and her family. But following the show, Monique and her family did not make up. Exposing that kind of personal family information on TV destroyed the chances of anything, any kind of relationship ever materializing. Number 3. Mackenzie Phillips When people see the words, tell all interview on their screens, there is an instant sense of mystery and we get hooked, especially when that celebrity is known for their outlandish behavior and highly documented substance use. Viewers of The Oprah Winfrey Show were probably still pretty unprepared for what was about to happen though. The former One Day at a Time star Mackenzie Phillips appeared on her show in 2009 to promote and discuss her soon to be released tell all book High on Arrival. She read aloud a passage describing how after waking up from a substance induced blackout, she discovered her father John was physically forcing himself onto her. When Mackenzie confronted him, he denied everything, but she continued and claimed that the relationship did eventually become consensual. And that's when the audience turned. Mackenzie came on a highly publicized television program and aired her extremely dirty laundry to the world. The world, or should I say her family, responded to the claims and they were actually shocked and felt that these were completely untrue. Ever since that interview, her career and her relationship with her family and well, everybody has been dark and rocky. Number 2. Sarah Ferguson The royal couple are still something to behold, something that a lot of people in the world wish to hear about as often as possible. Back in the day, instead of Harry and Meghan, they had Sarah and Prince Andrew. Now, Much like how Meghan and Harry came on Oprah's show to discuss their side of their story, Sarah did the same in the 1990s. Ferguson sat down with Oprah to discuss her time in the palace after 10 years of marriage to Andrew ended in divorce. According to Ferguson, living in the palace was anything but luxury. She told Oprah that the royal family life was not a fairy tale, but more of a dreadful existence adhering to nitpicked rules. For instance, the windows at the palace could only be opened a certain amount so that they all look in line. And she was reportedly berated one day when she opened a window and was told that it was the wrong thing to do. She also detailed the treatment that she had been receiving from the British media, who were and still are extremely invasive. She 
came back on the show a few times to basically go over the aftermath of the previous interview. Turns out the royal family doesn't like it when you trash it on TV. Eh, who knew? And at number one, Terry McMillan. One thing that Oprah loves to do is bring couples with issues onto her show to make a few bucks off of their problems. Best-selling author Terry McMillan based her novel How Stella Got Her Groove Back on her own life. Like the book's main character, she was a successful divorced middle-aged woman who found love again with a man two decades younger than her. According to Oprah's website, in 1995, McMillan took a trip to Jamaica and fell in love with a 20-year-old named Jonathan Plummer. Before long, they moved in together and got married, but they eventually split in 2005 when Plummer revealed that he was gay. Revealing the truth to the world resulted in a tabloid frenzy, and the couple started bad-mouthing each other to the press, with Plummer successfully suing his former wife for spousal support. The argument between these two came to a head thanks to Oprah Winfrey. Hosting both of them on her show in 2005, she allowed them to confront each other live on stage and let out all of their pain and frustration. Shortly after, McMillan sued Plummer for $40 million, citing emotional distress and destruction of reputation. The altercation on her show left McMillan feeling like she needed to make a statement, and she did. In doing so, she ruined the reputation of herself and her ex. And those are the interviews that destroyed lives thanks to Oprah Winfrey. What's your least favorite Oprah interview? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you for stopping beyond the screen. Drop a like if you had fun, and we will see you next time.